the second thing I think should be pointed out in this connection is where everyone was headed. Where everyone was headed. So the Israelites in Exodus 12 would soon take flight, right? They're going to go through the Red Sea into the wilderness, but then into the promised land, right? That's where they're headed. As they walked through the wilderness, they were headed toward Canaan. And what would be the fruit of the preaching of repentance by the disciples? Right? Continue the parallel, right? As the, as the Israelites go forth, obeying God's command, obeying with diligence, walking towards Canaan. Would it not be the further establishment of the kingdom of God on earth as repentance is preached? Would, not that, would that not be the fruit of the labors of the apostles and those who would follow after them? Or would it not be the same movement toward the promised land, only greater? The fruit of the preaching of the kingdom of God, again, repentance from sin and belief in the gospel, is the way the kingdom of God is manifested on the earth as God, by his spirit, turns the hearts of hell-bound enemies to love and serve him. And so this, again, remains our mission down to today and the means of victory. Right, not many in Jesus' day wanted this to be the mission. You've got opposite ends of the spectrum. Right? You've got some who are, at that time, namely the Sadducees, cozying up with Rome and thinking the way to ultimately salvation, the way to preservation, salvation, a good life here and now, was to cozy up with Rome, right? to be buddy-buddy with their authority and hope that in that they're able to kind of move up with them, right? be spared the judgment. Reminds me of, you know, the parallel I thought of today would be like the ERLC on abortion. Or you've got uh, Louisiana, Apologia Church goes to Louisiana trying to pass an abolition bill. And they've got this, uh, uh, the pro-life movement basically mounts an attack against them, staving off any kind, of, uh, any kind of law that would ever punish a mom for killing her child. And one of the signers of the document saying that, it's got all these big pro-life organizations and the Ethics and Religious Liberty Council from the Southern Baptist Convention is signing their name on that list. I think a year or so after they passed like a full-on abolition, it doesn't, they're not worth anything, and they've proven to not be worth anything, but they passed one of their resolutions at their meeting saying we're, we're for abolition, which when they do those things, the, I think really the main purpose of those would be to support legislation. It doesn't, in and of itself doesn't do anything. It's just saying like, here's what the Southern Baptist Convention believes, but it doesn't accomplish anything. So if there's going to be any teeth to that, it would be in actually backing a bill that would further that end, and they did the exact opposite. Right, cozying up with those who are in high places, seeking to be uh, having a seat at the table. So you've got that end of the spectrum. Ultimately, they're seeking a salvation in that. You've got others on the opposite end that want Jesus to be this military general who's going to lead some kind of violent coup against the authorities of the day. Right, those, are, those are the extremes that you have. But Jesus, who is, of course, our great general, as those on one end of the spectrum want him to be, He's our great general, but he's given a far different mission than either of those. Namely, it was to preach. And specifically, it was to preach repentance. Right? That's what Jesus has given to his church. And so far be it from us. As long as we're a church, far be it from us to change those marching orders. Let's pray.